Hi, this is Judith from Day Sky Design, also known as Day Sky Sister on my YouTube channel. And today I'm going to show you how to make a cute little plush hamster. And this is the drawing that I came up with, my design. And I used that to make a pattern. And I will have that on my blog. And that is listed down below, because right now I can't think of where it is. <laughs> anyway, that's crazy. But um, these are the colors that you're going to most likely need. You'll definitely need some black. You're going to need some light beige, pink, and a light tan brown color. Now you could switch up the colors. I, you know, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, the black for the eyes is pretty much, and the pink for the nose, you might need to go there. But as far as the browns go, I mean, you could do dark brown, light brown, whatever. A needle, a thread, and threads, and of course scissors. All right, here's my little guy. He's cut out. Oh yeah, and I forgot the fluff. Of course, you gotta always need fluff to stuff him. But uh, I'm sorry, it's not called fluff. It's called uh, polyfill. But I like calling it fluff. So, yeah, here he is, like, all cut out. So he's got his little belly. What I'm going to do first is sew on his eyes, his nose to his. I'm gonna sew his nose to this face part here, and then I'm gonna sew on his little hands and his feet to his arms and legs. And uh, that's what we're going to do first. And I'll Something I wanted to show you, and um, I have a light on, and that is um, by stuffing the mouth area. But before you do that, you need to sew on the mouth. And so you do this little line from the nose and do a little mouth. Now, it's a little different than my picture, but I kind of like the smallness of it. Like it's, It just looks cute to me. And then you just blanket stitch it around. I stopped here, stuffed it, and now I'm going to sew it shut. So that's just so as steps. you can see I um, did some sewing I stuffed the face and I sewed on little pink circles for the ears sewed on the eyes and then for the belly and I'm not quite done this but I'm going to sew on the little hands and feet then I'm going to s oh, here's the little feet and then I'm going to sew on a little tail which I I didn't thing to do but I'm going to add it on like a little triangle tail so you can use the same triangle for the nose you can use it for the tail as well which I which I need to cut out of this fabric of this color fabric and then what you're going to do is after I sew these on I'm going to sew the head to the body like so and then I'm going to sew this like so and we're going to put them together like so. Okay, show you in a bit. So there are a couple of things that I forgot to mention, and that is the ribbon and um, how you're going to put it inside so that you can hang your little hamster. I've got him sewn together in the front here on his little feet and his face. I sewed them together, and now I will show you what I did in the back. I took the same triangle for the nose and cut it into a tail, but I rounded the tip, because I like having a little tail, I think it's cute. And um, so what I'm going to do is sew this on. Now well, I, you can sew it on just like that, or you can do what I do, and I get these little split rings. They're just a little tiny split ring, and you're going to put it in on your ribbon. The reason I do this is it really helps for wear and tear on the ribbon. Just makes it that much stronger and that much easier to attach to a key ring. So like instead of buying a bunch of bulk key rings, this is what I do. Because then it's easier to slip on and off a key ring and it's not gonna slide off. Like a ribbon will slide off a key ring faster. Whereas the metal kinda doesn't. And I use the split ring, see, not just a, a jump ring because it's stronger. It's not going to um, come apart and pop off. So that's what I do. And what you're going to do is, of course, sew it on the back of your head. Then you're going to sew these together. And how I do that is I match it up. So what I'll do is I'll match, put this up, match the body. Of course, after I've, I've sewn that on, I'm just, just showing you how I'm going to do this. I will also match up the head just, just to see if it sits all nice and even. And then I will take this carefully apart and sew this together. Okay, and then of course this on top after I'm done. Okay, just wanted to show you those few things. 
Okay, another tip about sewing this together, I felt stitched it in the front. And in the back here, what I do to make it extra strong so your head won't pop off, I just catch, whoops, let me see. I just catch a little bit of the front and catch the back. And that's why I put the little extra piece on here. So you can secure the head just a little better. See, and I'm not wanting the stitches to come through. So you can't see the stitches in the front because you're just catching just a little bit of your material in the front. Oops, sorry. A little bit and then pushing through the two. Look at that. And see, it's going to make it a little stronger so that your head won't be easily detached or get weak. There. See, I, now it's really well sewn on. I'm just going to catch a little. I'm going to make a knot. What I do is grab it and then do it one more time. Okay, and that's how I secure the head onto the neck or the body. And now I'm going to do this, of course. And um, you can cut it, or you don't have to. And here again, I'm going to make sure it's matched evenly, make sure it's centered. And then just a little bit of the material, and then catch through the two. Of course, you can have the string here. You could cut and knot it off. It's a tube. It probably won't matter a whole lot. But I'm just doing fell stitching all the way around. Not blanket stitch, but I guess you could. Since it's on the inside, it's not going to matter. So remember, this is the inside. This will be the outside. And see how my stitches are not coming through? I don't like to see stitches on the outside. That's just me. And then when you go around um, and sew it together, you're going to reinforce it. And I'll show you how I do that. I just wanted to show you how both sides look completed. See, I sewed this on. And I did the same thing at the top and the bottom. And I did. And right, actually, this wasn't so bad because I had this. Uh, Front, this on front, so I could actually dig in there a little deeper to sew the top part of the neck. And of course, the bottom part is sewn here. And now we have the two pieces, and all I have to do next is to match it up. Of course, remember I matched it before. And then I'm going to blanket stitch all the way around, except for here. I have a little technique where I go through and under, and, and then through and under. Maybe I'll show you that in a bit. I'll start sewing. I probably want to start somewhere where you want to start somewhere where you're going to have a wide spot to stuff and stuff as you go. It's always important because if you start it like say right here, it gets it gets kind of bad. Oh, there's a little string, but um, yeah. So you want to start where stuffing the head on the a wide side of the 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 product or I mean the um, hamster so that when you sew it up shut it's not going to be awkward or you won't have like some people like to do the bottom but I don't like it because the tails are it's going to get so I'm going to do this side of the head I'll okay show you I, mean. I sewed up to close to the ribbon and I'm going to try to show you how I do this okay so I do my last stitch right next to the ribbon I actually catch some of the ribbon to do this last stitch, blanket stitch next to the ribbon part. Now, if you don't want a ribbon, then you don't even have to worry about this. But what I do is I go inside the ribbon. It's just my technique. Like this. See? So that my stitches don't show. Then I go through the ribbon. I come up through the material. I go through the ribbon, all the way across and through. And make sure you want it as close to your material as possible. Carefully pull it. This is a little tricky. You want to go through, all the way through. Now, the problem is you want to angle it so that you are going to come up beside this stitch. 
So po poke it through, pull out just a little bit so you can angle it back up right next to your stitch. So it's it's not going in straight. It's going in like, like that. Like um, diagonal? I'm not, I'm not sure. All right, now I'm going to go through the, th the ribbon again. I don't know if I can show you. Straight through. You're coming out right next to your material. So you're making the next stitch. So go in. Remember, you go poke right through so that you can angle it. Now, see, it's coming out the same stitch, but you don't want to. So you're going to pull back a little. Since it's been through once, you can kind of do this. You're going to come right out next to it. You're not going to pull it completely out. You, you'll feel it. You, it's hard to explain. You'll feel your, your needle on the inside, and you can move out the side. The, the, the next stitch. This is how I do the ribbon area. I know other people are different, but I like the way this looks. Like, I stitch straight across. How it looks like I'm just I just continued stitching, but that's just how I do it. And of course, the ribbon's already secured. Now remember, straight through. Now pull back because you're coming out your same stitch. You're gonna want to make it look like it's it's not gonna be straight through. See, right beside again. You're not pulling out completely. You're still you're still entering the same area which you're coming out on this a slant a slant that's the word not diagonal slant okay and then poke through the two ribbons this last stitch is a little trickier you want to come down beside and now you can go straight through oops don't catch the air right and then you're going to want to do right over top that same stitch beside it. You want to start your blanket stitching again. And then you start blanket stitching all the way around. Or at least till you get to the bottom of the belly, I would say right, right here. You're going to start wanting to stuff it. When you get to this arm on the opposite side, so you want to get all this side done, then you want to stuff the head, stuff the body, and then you continue to sew, sew and stuff, sew and stuff. Okay, so that's how I do the ribbon area. I hope that was clear. And I will show you in a minute. So, so we're coming to the end here. What I did is I stuffed the body before I got to this corner of the neck and I stuffed him and stuffed his little legs. Now I'm just sewing up the last part of the head. And I of course had to change my thread a couple times, but that happens. My kids are laughing at my voice online. They said I have a really deep voice compared to when I regularly talk. Talk regularly. I don't know about that, but my husband thinks it's the same. I don't know. Anyway, so we're almost done, him. That's all you gotta do is sew all the way around. Stuff, and I stuffed his little face. I think it's cute how sometimes you have it cut a certain way, but then when you stuff and sew it up, it has a different look. So I wasn't sure how the look would turn out. I like it. I think it's cute. Alright, now when you get to the end here, what I like to do is to go in that first stitch. Right here. Like reinforce it. Yeah. Squeeze it a little so you have a nice even feel to it. And if anything bulges out, you can always sew it back up. I kind of packed them tight. I say him, could be her. <laughs> and let me see, how does this look? 
Okay, I've got one more stitch to do, and that is to tie it off. Okay, I pull it tight, hold it, go through that string. Whoops, I lost my needle. That's all right. I'll put the string. Do like one more blanket stitch by catching the material. And pull, 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 pull. There, now it's knotted. Now what you're going to do is, of course, Okay, what you're going to do is, after you did the little knot, yep, it's hard to see, um, go through the two pieces and see if there's anywhere that needs like additional sewing. Looks pretty good. So I don't. I'm coming out through the other side. I'm pulling it a little bit tight. And squeeze. See? That way it goes in and you don't see your then I will what I do, this is just how I do it because I like to make sure that my knot's not gonna slip. And I'll catch this thread on this side. This is just how I do it. Knot. Then I go back in between between the materials and come out through the back of the head or the back of the body. Pull, give it a little pull. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my scissors and pull this. Okay, what you're going to do is after you come through the back of the head, you're going to put your scissors down like that. But don't cut. Just push down a little bit. Just so you're cutting the, the thread. Then boink. See? You can't see them. But it's been secured inside. And then whatever you, and I notice that you, you have like fibers that stick out on the side. You can take your scissors and just do a little trim. Give them a little haircut. You know, I hate those little fibers. They just get everywhere. And uh, your little guy is done. He's so adorable. Look at him. When he's, I love how his tail turned out. That's something I always liked about hamsters was their little tails. And there he is. You look so adorable and cute. So, there's my hamster. I don't know what to name him. Ugh. I think I will name him Pokey. <laughs> Pokey the hamster. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Um, catch me on Facebook. I am Day Sky Designs there. And I hope to see maybe someone do this. If you do, you can tag me on Facebook. And that would be great. Or just let me know in the comments. And if you make one, I hope it turns out awesome. Alright, you have a great day, everybody.